guys welcome back to my channel and in today's video is our May wrap up I'm very pleased with how many books I read for the month of May it was definitely a great reading month and we did read so many great books by the end of May we ended up reading a total of 10 books Yay! we read 10 books for the month of May which originally I thought it was nine but I actually forgot that we finished the book that I'm about to introduce y'all we finished that one on May 1st so I had to include that in our May's wrap up. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get right into the video. So the first book that we have here is Twisted Lies, y'all. Y'all know I was trying to finish this in the month of April, could not get it done, but we did finish this in May. I did end up rating this, I think a four or four and a half star. I ended up rating this four and a half stars. This was following um, Christian and Stella, and Stella's story. This was like a fake dating turned into like a real dating type of trope. I absolutely loved it. Christian was just such a great protector. He was such a lover. After you got him to open up a little bit, he was a little bit unhinged sometimes, but I just loved how he stepped in and just was able to give Stella that peace of mind that she so desperately needed, especially because she was like a social media guru and she had so many followers. So what comes with that type of attention, you can just imagine. And Christian was there to pretty much just like assist her with all of her troubles. So I ended up writing this four and a half stars and I absolutely loved it. So that was the first book that we read for the month of May. The second book that we read for the month of May was The Housemaid by Frida McFadden. Y'all, I love this book so much. I ended up writing this five stars and the freaking plot twist at the end literally had me gasping. Like I was just so shocked because throughout the entire book, you literally thought that it was one person. And then by the end of the book, you literally realized how crazy somebody else was. And I can't say much because I don't want to give spoilers, but five stars. Frida McFadden has done it again, as she always does. And I'm excited to read The Housemaid Secret, which is the second book to The Housemaid. I actually have that book right on my bookshelf right here, and I'm gonna read that for the month of June. So I can't wait to compare which, out of those two, which one will be my favorite. Cause I know the third book to The Housemaid is coming out, I think this month. So I have to catch up. So five stars for this one. So the third book that we read for the month of May was The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose. This was the first book of hers that I've read, and I cannot wait to just go through her entire catalog because this was literally such a great first book of hers for me to read, right? I ended up writing this, I think I already told y'all this, five stars and the plot twist at the end of this book literally had me shaking in my boots. Like, I just knew throughout the story, I just kind of knew who the villain was. Like, I started to put the pieces together but by the end of it, the real villain, like along with like the extra plot twist that she added in there, I was just like, child, I did not. I literally, nobody could have pre-warned me about that at all. And I still wouldn't have been as shocked as I was. Like, this was such a great book. I cannot wait to read another book of hers. I think I just bought One of Us is Dead by her. And I also wanna buy um, Home, I think it's Where the Bodies Are. I think that's also by Geneva Rose. I need to go to Walmart to get that one because the cover on that book, Home of Where the Bodies Are by Geneva Rose, the cover on that book, the one that Walmart sells is just everything. I have to get my hands on it. But yeah, this was five stars, absolutely loved it. If you don't know what this is about, pretty much she was like a successful defense attorney and her husband was like a struggling writer and he ended up cheating on her. This is on the back of the book and he had a mistress named Kelly Summers and she ended up dead and he gets framed for the murder and his wife is the one defending him in this murder and what you think you know about this book, you literally have no idea. So this was five stars. The fourth book that we read for the month of May was uh, Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. This was also the first book of hers that I've read. And when I told y'all I ate this book up so freaking much, this book was five stars for me. Oh Lord. This was probably the longest review that I ever wrote about a book. This was like a small town romance type of book and this was age gap as well to where like the woman was older than the man. What else did this book give? Forbidden romance, it gave 
I'm looking at my Goodreads review, so I'm gonna make sure I don't forget anything. It gave instant attraction, country boy, city girl type of vibe. If you watch the show, and I said this so many times, Virgin River on Netflix, this literally will give you those type of vibes because the main character in this book, which was Alexis, she was a doctor in the small town where she actually met Daniel. That town was so small, they literally had to drive like over an hour just to get to like the nearest clinic. You can kind of see where the story is going, right? So y'all, this book was so freaking good. I absolutely loved Daniel and Alexis. Daniel was only, I think, 28. Alexis was 37, turning 38. And I couldn't wrap my brain around in the beginning like how this would work out for them because they also live like two different type of lifestyles. They live in two different type of spectrums of the earth. They come from two different type of families, okay? And this book gave me everything I needed, okay? She gave just enough detail for every character. Like, it was, it was not too drawn out. She literally just did a great job with writing this character. Like, I was just very afraid that with Alexis being older than Daniel, that she would have came off like as annoying, more so like his mom than a companion or like a spouse or a girlfriend for that matter. But no, the way that she just wrote Alexis and the fact that she utilized her wisdom to help Daniel, to push him to be the best man that he can be, chef's kiss it was just so so good i rated this five stars i'm going to read the second book of the part of your world series yours truly i'm going to read that this month for the month of june and i just can't wait to see what else abby jimenez got up her sleeve so that was the fourth book that i read the fifth book that i read for the month of may was bride by ali hazelwood i am not new to ali hazelwood's writing at all i absolutely love ali hazelwood's writing that's why i was excited to read this book of hers Although this is her first fantasy book, to my knowledge, that she has written. And I actually liked it. I did rate this three and a half stars. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I just liked it, right? I do feel it, though. I can tell this was, like, her first, like, fantasy. And I don't know if it's because the type of fantasies that I've read, they were just, like, up there that this didn't quite meet that expectation. But she still did a very great job with writing this book. I absolutely love the characters, Misery and Lo. I think that was his name, right? Let me double check. Yeah, uh, is that his name? Yes. I absolutely loved how she wrote the characters, Misery and Lo. Misery has such a great um, personality to me. Um, Misery was a vampire and Lowe was a werewolf and he wasn't just any werewolf he was like the alpha of his pack so he was like the werewolf and this pretty much was like a forced marriage to pretty much like in a war and to pretty much like in like the rivalry I guess between the vampires and werewolves to kind of like mend things and this book was pretty good. I did enjoy it. I did not like the explicit scenes like I did not enjoy the um, spicy scenes in this book and it's not because I'm opposed to spice you all know that but I just it was very cringe and I just didn't really like mm -mm, it just didn't do it for me so that kind of like affected my rating as well overall though I definitely do recommend this book think that it does live up to the high no it doesn't I don't think it lives up to the hype in my opinion but it is definitely worth the read so yeah that was Bride by Ali Hazelwood the sixth book that we read for the month of May was Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter this is the first book I read of Lynn Painter and I absolutely loved it so much like this book literally had me swooning and I just can't wait to read more of her books because this really set the tone for me I did rate this four stars and this was following the story of Wes and Liz this was a YA romance and I just love this so much like this is following okay so how can I describe it without giving any spoilers so Wes and Liz were like best friends since elementary school I believe it was elementary school they were very very young and now they're in high school and they're next door neighbors and Wes and Liz has like this love-hate relationship with each other like you know you have that brotherly and sisterly type of relationship but theirs was not like brother and sister at all 
but to where like y'all just nag, nag at each other just get on each other's nerves but deep down y'all know y'all really care for each other that is what west and liz was giving but then they had like this other guy in their friend group growing up they had a few people but i'm just pointing out like the main people in the story which was a guy named michael and michael ended up moving back to their town and ended up going to the high school that they were that they are currently at and liz always had a crush on michael growing up so liz had this bright idea to ask west to pretty much fake date her to get the attention of Michael so he can end up being so he can end up being her prom date for prom actually and what Liz while they're like doing it she realized like oh I actually think I like Wes more so than I might like Michael but I'm not sure this is all in the back of the book so I'm not spoiling anything so this just takes you on that journey of them doing like this fake dating friends to lovers enemies to lovers like all of that small town romance oh it was just so good i just ate it up so much i will highly recommend it, especially if you have young adults at home like middle school high school this is such a very innocent love story that i literally just could not get enough of so i ended up writing this four stars i loved it so very much and yeah lynn painter did a great job with writing this story and i can't wait to read more of her books the seventh book of the month of May was actually my favorite book that I read for the month of May and actually probably one of my favorite books ever at this point. This is literally probably in like my top 10 favorite books. It's After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I literally rated this five and a half stars. Like, I could not get enough. When I told you I dang near read this only in one sitting, well maybe two sittings, I read this in one day within 24 hours, I believe I did. I read it on the couch and then I went in my bed and I read it. Like those were the only two places that I read this book. And I only probably left my couch just because my kids forced me to get up. <laughs> I loved this book so much. This is pretty much following Lauren and Ryan's marriage and them deciding if love was enough for them to stay together or if they should just get a divorce pretty much, hence the title after I do. They've been together for quite a while. I think almost 11 years, I think married for almost eight. I could have those numbers wrong just a little bit, but it's definitely around that time frame. And their relationship just got very mundane. They just stopped doing things that they used to do for each other in the beginning of the relationship and just pretty much started taking each other for granted and stop understanding or stop or let's say they forgot the reason why they said I do in the first place. So this book was pretty much following their journey on fighting for their marriage and, and deciding for themselves if this is the person they still wanna be with for the rest of their lives. This book, when I tell you it was so freaking relatable, like there was a certain part in the book and I don't even wanna say it because it was so iconic so I won't, but if you know, you know. It was probably right before they decided that they were just gonna try to like do their own thing. And she said this one line, and I know it gut punched him so bad. <laughs> I literally just laughed so hard. And Lauren just reminded me a lot of my, me in a way, like the way that I think and I overthink and I just overthink. Like, for example, and I think I said this in a vlog before when I was done reading this book, like if she, if he tells her something and she was like, but why? And he gives her a vague answer, but she's like, but why? But why? Like she needs like all of her questions answered to like such a basic question because she goes in detail and goes into depth with every single thing. And I'm like the same way. Like I need an answer for everything. Like I need to know why a process is a process. I need to know why that you think the way that you think. Like I need to know these things. <laughs> so I think that's why I related to Lauren in this book so much in this story because it was just so funny to me. But I also think this is such a great lesson for any adult that's in a committed relationship or a committed marriage should read. When you start to forget why you and your spouse was together in the first place, except for not the obvious reasons. If there's, if your life is in danger, if they're disrespecting you, if they're, if they're clearly you know, doing things they should not be doing and breaking their vows when they're not supposed to, then okay, those are obvious. But when you have a good person and they don't cheat on you, they don't they don't disrespect you, they are still a good person for you. Y'all just kind of like lacked that spark that you did in the beginning. I think this is a great book to help you remember 
or to remind you of why you said I do in the first place. So my favorite book for the month of May, and I did rate this five and a half stars. And yes, I encourage all of you to read that. And I can't wait to read even more of Taylor Jenkins Reads books because baby, this is definitely one of my favorite authors now. The book that we read for the month of May was The Number One Lawyer by James Patterson. This was the first book that I read, but read by James Patterson. I absolutely loved it. I did end up rating this four stars. And I just love his writing so much. I say this all the time, but if his books does not have a movie, if it's, if it, if his books have not been made into a movie or a TV show yet, I would be highly, highly shocked because his books are li literally TV bitch worthy. Literally. I absolutely love The Number One Lawyer so freaking much. This is pretty much about um, a number one defense attorney named Stafford Lee Penny and he never lost a case in Biloxi, Mississippi. He was like the lawyer, number one lawyer in that town and he was very well known. And finally, he ended up, ooh, he ended up becoming the number one suspect in a murder case, which was a murder case of his wife. He ended up being on trial for the murder of his wife and he decides that he wants to defend himself because he knows if anybody's going to get him off the hook of this case, it was going to be him. If anybody say that they love short chapters and a lot of page breaks, he is the one. He, he is the king of that, okay? His chapters are so short. His books are so fast paced, which is everything that I love in a book. I don't think anybody beats him. I'm sorry, I don't think they do. I mean, he even has chapters as short as one page, and that one chapter of that one page literally will have you jaw dropping. Like, what the heck? And you like, listen, nobody does it better than James Patterson when it comes to like the short chapters, page turners. Like, he knows how to write a freaking book, okay? So if you like lawyer type of TV shows, if you like Snapped, if you love like Scandal, if you love anything of that sort, you will freaking love his writing. So yes, I ended up rating this four stars. Ninth book that we read for the month of May was another James Patterson book. It was The First Lady by him, also by Brennan Du Bois. I ended up rating this four stars as well. I love this so much. This is pretty much about a first lady that ended up, that went missing. And there was just a lot of things going on. The president was having an affair and it kind of just like, was a ripple effect into everything else that happened. The plot twist of this book, I honestly was not expecting either. It was really, really good. I was able to get through this book. Uh, it didn't take me long to get through this book either. Um, but the the first lady, I'm not doing a good job really explaining this book, so I'm gonna try to read the back of this one. It said, it's always been fascinated by the idea that one secret can bring down the government. What if that secret is a U.S. president's affair to remember that becomes a nightmare he wishes he could forget? Stepping into the diabolical scenario is Sally Grimson, leader of the Presidential Protection Division. She summoned to a private meeting with President Tucker and his chief of staff, and what they discussed is something that she could never have predicted. It's the disappearance of the First Lady, which becomes in the wake of the scandalous revel revelation of the president's affair just two months before the election for a second term. I set it up so that the first lady seems to always have merely escaped to a safe haven to get away from the media storm. But you know there's a big twist coming, like the White House receiving a ransom note along with what could be the first lady's finger. Now Sally is in a race against the clock and she cannot trust anyone, especially since I plant evidence that leads her to a troubling question. Could the kidnappers be from inside of the White House? If you could not imagine that whole thing playing out as I was reading it, I would be utterly shocked because this book was just so good. Literally, for both of his books, I literally feel like I could see exactly what I was reading in real time. Like it was like a TV show. So this was also four stars for me, friends, and I loved it so much. And the last and final book, which is the 10th book, I don't have it here with me, was Love You Always by Lauren Lacey. I ended up rating that three and a half stars. Now with that book, I was really debating between three and a half and four stars, but I ended up just rating three and a half stars, and this is the reason why. 
I absolutely love that book. I really did. I will actually put on the screen here the little, um, I made an Instagram story of like, just the overall of unpacking what I felt about the book. So that was the first book by Lauren Lacey. Amazing author, wonderful author, also by a black woman. So can't wait to have her on my Black Author Fridays on my Instagram stories. That book was really, really good. It was following um, Parker and Jackson, I believe that's his name. Yes. It was following Parker and Jackson, and they were also just childhood lovers. But their relationship to me was just too much. It was it was a lot. It was a lot. Um, if that was my babies, I, that is not a relationship that I would quite want you to fight for because that is just too much for a young adult, a high schooler, a teenager to have to go through at such a young age, right? So. Just read the trigger warnings because this has a lot to do with like addiction. This has a lot to do with mental illness. This has a lot to do with depression. This has a lot to do with anxiety. This has a lot to do with alcoholism, pill addiction. If you struggle with any of those, just please go in there just mindful of those um, trigger warnings because I really don't want this to be um, triggering for you. Um, let's start with the pros. So the book was good. This, that book just, it's a lot for me to unpack. Like that book literally drains me. Let me kind of read my reviews so y'all can like really grasp like what I was feeling. So I said on Goodreads, three and a half stars. I was really de debating hard between a three and a half star and a four star, but ultimately decided three and a half stars was my official rating. Here's why. I absolutely love the writing in this book. The character and plot development was so great to see and witness in both the main characters, to be honest. Because if I'm being honest with you, Parker and, J and Jackson drained me so bad. By over 50% of the book, I was proud to see their growth. I also love the writing of the then and now to see how intense the relationship was since they were kids. So something that Lauren Lacey did in the writing was she went back and forth between like the past and the present and I love that because it literally tied in and made everything make sense, right? So I love that. This is a small town, second chance, friends to lovers, trolls, all in one and I loved it. The author did an exceptional job on touching sensitive topics such as mental illness, addiction, grief, depression, etc. in such a beautiful and real way and I feel like she could not have done this any better than she has. I love the found friend group that turned family and the community that was established in this book. This really shows you what true friendship and community is all about. I would not recommend this to any middle aged or young kids due to the explicit scenes for one because the spicy scenes were spicy and I, I did like it, but it's not something that I would allow my young adult to read. <laughs> And a lot of things spoke about in this book that could introduce them to things I wouldn't necessarily want their world to discover yet. Hence, alcoholism, um, sex, addiction, gr grief. I mean, kids should know about death to a certain extent. And this had, this was a, this was a lot even for my at my grown age. So it was just too much. I would not put that on my my young adults. No. Okay, if that makes sense. I do feel like at times the addictions on both ends was a bit too much sometimes and a bit excessive and it was just draining to read, which overall impacted my rating. I felt drained by the end of the story but relieved by the ending. Okay, so I hope all of that makes sense. And what I mean by that is, I felt drained in the aspect of Parker was just too invested. Like Parker didn't necessarily have the same type of addiction that Jackson had. But the way that she was just so invested in him, like nothing else mattered to Parker besides like Jackson and helping Jackson. It was too much. Although I, it's very admirable on how much she just cared and loved for him. That's why Jackson's mother loved her so much. But it was just, it was a lot. Like girl, like girl, he cannot, you cannot let him be your entire world but I also understood the pressure that she felt like so much that Jackson went through I can just imagine all of that pressure on Parker on just making sure that Jackson made it to another day it was just too much it was it was too much that's why I said the addiction on both ends but she was very addicted to Jackson in not a healthy way in my opinion 
but to each his own that was just too much <laughs> and i just loved how her parents were like girl like you need to relax like he cannot be your entire world and i love that jackson's mom gave her that same type of advice now their friend group because they was all a part of this one friend group and the one thing that kind of like annoyed me with her friend group like they were all just great friends that's why i said their found friend group turned family because that's really what they were I felt like they were hypocritical at times because at one at one point they were telling Parker to do this and at another point they was telling her to do exactly what they were telling her to do the opposite of what they were telling her to do with overall just causing her a lot of confusion and conflict and being conflicted and I just didn't like like that back and forth like you either gonna be this way and feel this way or you either gonna be this way or feel this way period point blank right um so that book it was just a lot and it really made me hesitant it's making me hesitant on when i'm going to pick back up the next book in the series again the writing was amazing that's why it's hard for me to like recommend yes i recommend it but then again i'm like but just be prepared like be prepared i never at the end of the book felt so like drained before and that book really did that for me like not even with magnolia parks Magnolia Parks to me was like entertaining. It was like a lot by the end, but I didn't feel like drained, like how I felt after reading Love You Always. Nonetheless, that was the book. That book for me I ended up rating it three and a half stars. So, friends, that is the end of my maze wrap up. Let's grab all the books like I usually do. So, we ended up reading 10 books for the month of May. Um, I have nine physically here with me. Love you always. I don't have the physical book for that one. So we ended up reading Twisted Lies, The Housemaid, The Perfect Marriage, Part of Your World, Bride, Better Than the Movies, After I Do, The Number One Lawyer, and The First Lady. I Overall, I had an amazing, an amazing reading month. Like, I don't know if May was my best reading month, but I do... Y'all, I'm sorry, my kids are upstairs with my husband. They're loud, you can hear them. But I had such a great reading month for the month of May. I'm excited for the month of June to see like how I feel about June's pick. Um, so I'm actually gonna see what my first book of June is gonna be in just a moment. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, I can't wait to see how June wraps up for us. But in the meantime, friends, I will see you in the next video. Bye.